As we stepped off of our tour bus in the Andean Highlands, just outside of Juliaca, we were eagerly greeted by members of the Minka Artisan Co-op. The women gave each of us a necklace made out of yarn and adorned with small beads made from alpaca fleece, and then grabbed our hands, leading us in their welcome dance. From that point on, despite our American clothing, sunscreen, and small electronic devices, we were members of the community. Melanie Eberts has been buying knitted shawls, scarves, gloves, and more from the women of the Minka Artisan Co-op for the past 14 years to sell and distribute across the United States through her small business called Art Andes. Eberts' business relationship with the co-op has turned into a friendship, and each year she takes her tour group to meet and interact with these hard-working and humble women. The co-op is made up of seven different committees, each with 20 to 30 knitters. Every committee is headed by a president, and our guide, Jose Berdejo, translated as the presidents introduce themselves. Okay, your attention please. Welcome you all, you know, she really expects uh, this trip not to be the first one, nor the last one. She wants you to come more often, you know, during the whole time. So, uh, and she's very happy, she's very grateful for your presence right here. Then, they got down to business, showing us how they turn raw alpaca fleece into beautiful, seamless sweaters, bags, or even teddy bears. The women go to the market and buy alpaca fleece for 8 to $10 per pound, and then spin it into yarn using a drop spindle before beginning to knit. Because the women don't dye the fiber, all of their products are different shades of brown, gray, white or black, and they combine colors to create different patterns. The real intercultural experience began as we shopped around after the demonstration and bartered with the knitters for their handmade goods. The musicians filled the air with traditional Andean music, while our group spent about $1,300 on the various items available. While some of us were shopping, Lyndon Ellingson and Anita Meyer, both from Washington, we're busy teaching the Minka women the knitting techniques that they like to use. Ellingson and Meyer marveled at how fast the Minka knitters picked up on techniques that took them weeks to master. Even though we didn't speak the same language, uh, you know, she was able to understand what I was doing, the younger one, and then show the other two that I was working with. She is super quick. I mean, I do teach this, uh, and it takes most women two hours. <laughs> They're quick in your own Oh my language. God, she's got needle lace going both directions like that. Shoot. Things got even more exciting once we'd spent all of our money. The women packed away what was left of their merchandise and began to dance. They grabbed us all by the hands and once again led us in various dances and provided Lacey, Britta, and me each with a traditional hat and skirt. Being a part of the Minka community for a day and seeing the homes of a few of the women was something that stuck with members of our tour group for the rest of our time in Peru. Penny Peters, also from Washington, will have a hard time forgetting the Minka women. I appreciate seeing the museums and learning about the history, but my most memorable experiences are interacting with people. Reporting for UWEC Peru, I'm Megan Rolchin.